Hello everyone and welcome back to Deersley and to part two of my building scratch build. One or two of you have I've passed some nice uh, comments actually about the uh, combination of plastic and card in the modelling. And I've done this little unit here which fits on the side of the shop. It's this unit here which is at an angle. And this too has been, is a combination of card and plastic card. The basic shape which is where covered with the brick papers is cardboard and inside as in the other uh, walls I've got plastic for the windows and the door is in there and what I've done I've made it deep enough for this so that the plastic roof glues onto this and I've braced it on the inside and then being a plastic roof I can put some edging here for the rainwater and I will have a a downpipe here. So this system seems to work quite nicely and you get the uh, ease of the brick papers and all the printed stuff you can you can uh, buy which I think looks uh, quite realistic together with that little bit more control over the detail that plastic card allows. So to start this video I'm going to uh, stay with the plastic card Part and add uh, quite a bit of detail. At the end of the last video, before I finished it, um, I did stick this front rail on and it's to take the old-fashioned shop awning which folds back in here somewhere, I'm not quite sure, but I need to get the shop awning onto this fascia and I've got a, another piece to cut now and fit along here. So to cut the valances from uh, the plastic card, this is one millimetre plastic card, I simply line it up, it's about four uh, millimetres in depth, and then holding the ruler firmly, just make a few light cuts, don't press too hard because that can be dangerous, just a few light cuts, just follow the ruler, there's no need to cut all the way through because you can simply snap the rest of the plastic off and it comes off, the edge comes off very cleanly. Now there is a, a, a ridge that the knife makes along that edge so I would simply take one of my files and just remove that edge. This can then be cut to length and I'll use some super glue to fit it on the edge of the shop. Here is the valance fitted around the uh, corner and you can see on the photograph that the awning is, is rolled back in the up position. So what I've done, I've fitted uh, some thicker strip behind here to represent the box in which the awning rolls itself up in. It's proved a bit fiddly fitting these bars. I think in future I will do this earlier. Um, but anyway, they're all fixed except uh, this one. And with a careful bit of trimming, I've made it fit uh, within the uprights. And it's just the, it's just the tightness of the fit that's holding it in place. So. I just use liquid, liquid cement uh, on a brush and just gently let that flow off the brush and capillary action will draw the uh, cement underneath and uh, make good the joint. Except for a little bit of filling, um, the shop front detailing is complete. There are some other bits of plastic detailing that I now need to do uh, before I can paint to finish off the, uh, the detailing. 
Uh, the most obvious one now, and I want to put them on, are the drain pipes. On this front elevation I have one here, one here, and there is a, a small white one actually that comes up about halfway up the building on this edge. And on the elevation here um, I have two, uh, one here at the end of the shop and one here right at the end of the building. For this I'm going to uh, use some plastic rod. This is uh, from Plastruct and this is a one and a half millimeter diameter rod. So that's just going to look just about right I think for um, uh, double O gauge drain pipes. Heat is a good way of shaping plastic and I do it using the heat or the flame of a tea light, just get that going. And I'm going to soften a little bit of the end of this um, plastic rod in order to make a pipe bend in the drain pipe. Okay, so now we have the five um, drain pipes shaped and ready for painting. The next bit of detailing I'm going to turn my attention to is the tops of the chimney and the chimney parts. I've made three of these. This is the longest one and it's just a lamination of plastic card uh, to, to go on the top of each chimney. And on the top of that I'm going to put some chimney pots made from uh, plastic, 4mm plastic tubing. So they will fit on, fit on there. There is a way of cutting uh, plastic tubes and uh, rod with um, simply a craft knife. With, and with the tube it's a way of doing it without sort of crushing the sides. In fact you can cut... Um, uh, aluminium tube or even brass tube of you know smallish diameters in exactly the same way without a pipe cutter but you can do it with a uh, a Swan Morton knife and all you do is you mark it out I've got a little mark on the on the pipe there and I'm just going to put the blade on that mark and then you want to roll it backwards and forwards You want some pressure on it but not a lot of pressure. But what you're trying to do is just cut through the outer through the outer layer and the rolling action keeps it true. Oops, it slipped there. Oh, it went through in one go. As soon as it breaks through that, it chops through the side walls. It's ended up on the floor, so I'll just pick it up. And uh, as you can see, the tube is still is still round uh, with with no deforming. The detailing with the plastic parts is progressing quite smoothly. Um, some of the plastic detailing I fitted on here, the door. Um, there's a drain pipe there, and um, a rainwater hopper at the top just cut out of a chunk of uh, plastic card and, and the board, the weathering board there. Now the colours, I've uh, painted the shops now, I quite like the colours in the original photograph. So I've mixed with Tamiya paints uh, this green which was basically a, a bright yellowy green that I toned down with a bit of dark blue and this light blue which was basically white with a little bit of the same dark blue in it. Now I've kept some of this, uh, some of each of the colours actually, in the original mixing pots. I've just plugged the colour with a, a wad of tissue here to stop it drying out because I'll need that particularly when I come to do the awning. Now I haven't done the glazing yet, uh, that's got to come up next, but what I'm going to do 
now because I'm going to fit an awning on this I want to put the name on here first. Now I've got the name board printed on my computer I made up a name it's my uh, uh, father-in-law's name actually is going to be the uh, butcher here and I need to stick that on what I'm going to do is use an old CD label and stick my print onto that and of course that's self-adhesive so I'll then be able to tear, peel that off and have a self-adhesive label that'll stick on here. Now this is fairly matte and now before I stick anything on this I want to make this gloss because the self-adhesive will stick far better to it. Now I'm going to make the awning uh, for the butcher's shop. It's the more modern uh, type of awning. Um, so first I'm going to laminate a piece of 0.5 millimeter plastic card between two thicker strips which I'm going to cut off from this one and a half millimeter uh, plastic card board. I'm going to use a heavier knife for this because it's a, a thicker board than I normally use but again just light cuts there's a little curve on that but it will straighten out if you just smooth it back a little bit This is the printed design for the awning and it's 65 millimeters across so I want to make sure I get two lengths out of my cut strip that's the same width. I'll cut it a fraction over actually because I can always uh, sand it down to fit. So that's one. Between these two strips I'll cement a piece of 0.5 millimeter plastic card. This is the thin plastic card sheet cut and this eventually will have the awning design fitted on it. I've cut it a bit oversized for the strips and I can always trim it later. So now I'm going to laminate the first of these strips and I'm going to put, this is the straightest edge actually, I'll trim that other bit down. So I'll work on this straight edge and with my liquid cement I'll apply a line of it along there with the brush and then I'll hold that in place right up to the edge. It's a, a bit over long but that means I can trim it down later. Now to get that nice and square along there I'm going to use a ruler and some tweezers and just hold it on the edge like that. and then make sure this is pressed down to the ruler. It's a bit awkward doing it like this. Ah, that's better for the camera, but I can just push that down so that it's now straight along that edge. When that's dry I'll do the same with the other edge on the other side and I've got that sandwiched between two of the thicker strips. A couple of other tools that are useful. Um, first of all these clamps. While I'm waiting for the plastic card to dry I've been uh, cutting up two, uh, a two millimeter and one millimeter card to section off some of the internal walls. Um, this is going to uh, restrict 
um, into rooms as it were, the uh, lighting I'm going to put in so that there's not light leaking out all over everywhere. Uh, and it also adds to the structure. If you can see here I've, uh, just, sec I've just sectioned off here the, the butcher's shop and this is the grocer's shop done over here and I'm just going to uh, split up into two stories actually this area here uh, for the centre building. This is another really useful uh, tool that costs nothing to build, uh, just uh, any section, any square section piece of wood. This is uh, just under two inches by two inch, so nice and sturdy. And I've uh, just glued a piece of uh, fine sandpaper on here. And it's useful for all sorts of sanding uh, uh, processes, because this doesn't flex. So with the awning now laminated, I can true up that edge on try and do it in the camera without moving it so you can see. So you can just use it as a, a sort of a firm base but it's got flat sanding paper on it and it'll just true up an edge. Now with this awning I don't want it to stick out at right angles, I want it to stick out at an angle. So I'm going to start to sand an angle in there. Um, I could make a jig for this but I'm going to do it by eye and just gently sand the plastic until that whole angle is sanded. The awning is uh, now finished uh, the thin plastic hard for 0.5 millimeter is extremely fine, so that's that's great. But I've braced it underneath. There's the front board, and what are in fact representing the the uh, arms that fold the uh, fold the awning back. But obviously they act as bracing, so they're all stuck on here. Now, because I've got the angle on here, all I need to do now before I paint it is to stick it on here. Um, the shop front, I've scraped back some of the blue paint along the top edge of the shop front where I'm going to fit the awning. So I'm going to run some of the liquid cement along the edge. And then I'm going to carefully stick that along. It's going to go over the door, so I'm going to put it that end. And I'm just gripping it with my thumbnail, my left hand thumbnail, and just checking underneath that that is sort of straight. I'll give it a, a little grip for a moment just with my thumbnail and I shall then let this dry thoroughly. Now this has to be painted uh, blue eventually but also these big windows are a little um, untypical for the uh, 1960s. There were some finer uh, sort of glazing bars on them. So what I'm going to do to make those is use some Tamiya tape, which is masking tape, and I, I save old uh, store cards and out-of-date credit cards and things, and I'm going to put a bit of the Tamiya masking tape across there, and then when I spray paint uh, the awning, I'm going to spray that at the light blue as well. So therefore I can, then I can cut that into strips to make the glazing. The internal walls are uh, nearly ready to do, uh, install the lighting. I'm not worrying about the floor at the moment, but I have one more uh, ceiling to put in here. I've sort of sectioned off um, the upper story uh, with some 2mm card. And now using Elmer's glue, I will uh, run a bead of glue around the top of that
and I now lay in a piece of one millimeter card which I've used for all the, the ceilings actually because it's easier to cut a small hole in the one millimeter card to take the uh, take the wiring so I'm going to put a little find a little bit of weight and put on there perhaps a couple of my paint bottles just to hold that in place while the glue is drying. I'm now ready uh, to put the final painting on the shop. I've got the um, the shop front with the with the dried awning masked off. Um, I've masked the obviously the window area and the name so as not to get any overspray there. And I'm going to uh, paint while I'm doing that my piece of uh, masking tape. So I'm going to take, remove the plug from the reserve plate and give that a, a good stir. This is the blue I mixed up originally. That's the spraying complete. I have finished the internal uh, card structures defining some of the room areas and I've also uh, added um, lighting to this now. Uh, the lighting I've used is uh, 3mm uh, LEDs and warm white. I quite like that sort of warm look to the lighting. So now I've tested it and it works fine. I'm now going to fit the roof. I haven't said too much about the roof itself um, as I had this made before I started the video. But it is the scale scenes roof tiling and they advocate cutting it in strips and overlaying it uh, so that it has a sort of 3D effect. I haven't done this before but I decided to do it on this and the effect is really quite pleasing. It does actually, despite the thinness of the paper, it does actually give you a nice sort of roof, um, three-dimensional roof tiling effect. Okay, I've reached a big moment in the construction of this building and that's fitting the roof on. I've used um, elastic bands. Uh, I was a bit nervous about doing this because of the card edges of the, uh, of the roof. I didn't want to distort it. So what I've done is I've put two steel rules, one on this side, one on this side, and the, uh, that's taking the point pressure off the bands and the steel rules is help keeping the edge nice and flat. So all I can do now is wait and see what it looks like when it's dry. The butcher's shop front is now finished. Uh, the awning's in place. But I'd like to show you how I do the this finer uh, bit of uh, glazing to finish off the windows. I've got the green ones to do and so I've got some Tamiya tape on here that I've sprayed the same colour green as the um, as the grocery shop and all you need to do this is to have a, a new blade a steel rule and a, and a pair of scissors and to just press it down onto the um, glazing just a cocktail stick. So it's a question of cutting 
a thin strip of the glazing bar. and pulling it up. This can then be applied uh, across the window. With all the glazing bars now done I'm going to apply a coat of Johnson's Clear or any sort of gloss varnish just to seal the, the glazing bars or the tape in place. To fit the drain pipes in place I'm going to make some little brackets. You can see two on here and they're just short lengths of uh, fine soft wire wrapped around a one and a half millimeter drill and twist, twisted up to form this shape. They're then simply cut off and I can drill a hole in the wall and glue the drain pipe in place. Before drilling the holes for the uh uh, drain pipe mountings, I've actually weathered around the base and underneath where the drain pipes are going to be. So I'm going to line up a ruler at right angles. I'm just going to put my square in at the bottom. And then I'm going to drill couple of holes, one at the top and one near the bottom. I should then be able to fit in the drain pipe. I'll just slide that down, level it over the hole, just push that in place and do the same this end. Just get the little bracket over the hole and push it in place. Now I can just apply some super glue and glue that drain pipe in place. I've marginally um, allowed a little bit extra for each pipe so that when they're secure in the wall I can just cut them flush. Another little detail I put in which um, doesn't look fully convincing close up but it's remarkably good from a normal viewing position is the use of um, another strip of one millimeter cardboard uh, of the builder's card cut into a five uh, millimeter width and pasted underneath the um, the roof edge for the sort of soffits and the guttering and representing all of that. I've painted it black so that the um, the pipe bend at the top comes up and sits underneath it. One of the interesting things I felt on this building was this little bit of detail on the old awnings on the grocer's shop. Um, these sort of bent angled uh, uh, rods and chains I thought would make quite an interesting uh, modelling feature. This is my answer to it. It's some tiny uh, diameter 0.45 millimetre diameter brass wire and some of the tiny chain I had left over from the uh, crane build. This project is uh, pretty well there actually. Um, I've got some of the interiors to fiddle around with but I'm going to call it uh, finished at this moment. Um, I finished the chimney pots and the chimneys last um, because they're easily knocked so I've just done that and for the, um, for the painting I've just used some artist acrylic colour. Uh, all the colours you can see on the chimney uh, tops are a mixture of uh, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium red and uh, cobalt blue. 
mix these in various mixes and you can get all manner of uh, lovely weathering um, effects and colours. The flashing around the chimney where the chimney joins the roof to get that feeling of uh, lead I've used some self-adhesive um, aluminium tape. Uh, you can buy it in a roll, it's not too expensive, it's very thin and it just peels off. The only thing is it's quite shiny so when I cut a section off I went over it with some uh, fine sandpaper just to tone down the shine and then when it was fitted I airbrushed it uh, with some of the smoke colour. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, build. I've set part of my uh, modelling room here up to take some still photographs of this. So thanks again, thanks for your support and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.